Hi folks, this is going to be the long jump problem and this is a projectile shot at an angle. So here goes. Um, a long jumper leaves the ground at an angle of 20 degrees to the horizontal and a speed of 11 meters per second. How long does it take her to reach her maximum height? What is the maximum height and how far does she jump? So here goes nothing. If you've got any sort of projectile that is shot at an angle, the very first thing you do, always, 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 is break that up into vertical and horizontal components. So our long jumper is going to be leaving the ground at 11 meters per second, 20 degrees above the horizontal, following a parabolic path. And what we're talking about is we're talking about the, the center of mass of the athlete. So it's not necessarily the... Uh, the the feet of the athlete, but probably, most typically, um, it's going to be the center of mass, which is around the midsection of the athlete, is going to follow that parabolic path. So we're going to figure out the initial horizontal and vertical components. How am I going to do that? To break this vector into original vertical velocity equals and this vector, which is the horizontal. So horizontal, this is the adjacent side, that's going to be 11 meters per second, my hypotenuse, times the cosine of 20 degrees. And so 11 meters per second times the cosine of 20, I got 10.3 meters per second. The original vertical velocity is, this is the opposite side, so I'm going to use sine. So the sine of 20 degrees times the 11 meters per second, and I'm going to end up with an original vertical velocity of 3.76 meters per second. Now that I have that, let's go forth and put our two columns down. We're going to have a column of horizontal information and a column of vertical information. Horizontal and vertical. On the horizontal side, I know the constant steady horizontal velocity is 10.3 meters per second. I do, do not know the horizontal displacement x, how far the long jumper jumps, and I do not know how long this athlete is going to be in the air. Vertically, I know the original vertical velocity is going to be a positive 3.76 meters per second. Now I have motion in this problem that is both up and down. And if you have motion in two directions, up and down, you have to define one as positive, one as negative, and so I'm going to call up positive and down negative. So original vertical velocity is a positive 3.76. When the athlete hits the ground again, her final vertical velocity is going to be a negative 3.76 meters per second. If I have a path that is symmetrical left and right, and they're all in the same altitude, takeoff and landing, those two are going to be the same. Gravity is going to slow the athlete, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, down towards the center of the Earth. And I do not know why displacement, and I do not know time. So let's go figure out what we can figure out in this situation. I can figure out the time. So let's do that first, because once I have time, I can then put it back into horizontal. To find time, let me change color here. To find time, I'm going to choose um, this and time, one of my favorite equations, Vf equals Vo plus At, sweet little easy equation. Time is going to be final velocity minus original divided by acceleration. Final velocity is a negative 3.76 minus a positive 3.76 meters per second divided by a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And when I do the math for time, I get, do, 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 I actually don't have it done. I've got to do it. Point, uh, 3.76 divided by 9.8. I end up with total time of 0 0.767 seconds in the air. In the air. Okay, that's my total time. Now that I have that, I can use that time here. And remember, on the horizontal side, I can only use this equation for constant velocity. And I want to solve for distance. How far does she jump? So this is going to be horizontal velocity times time, 10.3 meters per second, 
times my time of 0 0.767 seconds. And when I do that times 10.3, I ended up with a displacement of 7.9 uh, 7.90 or 7.91 meters. That is the range or the horizontal displacement. There's one last part of this problem, and that is, what's the maximum height? Okay, what's the maximum height? This y. In order to do that problem, I'm going to only use half the path. Why? Because of the fact that if I do what's the total vertical displacement, the jumper jumped up and then back down. So the total displacement for the entire trip, the total vertical displacement is going to be zero. She's going to end up exactly where she started. So if I want to know maximum vertical displacement, I'm going to use my original vertical velocity, and I'm going to use final velocity at the top is zero. So let's go do that. So I'm going to give myself some space. The goal is to find vertical displacement, what's that going to be? I know final at the top is going to be 0. Original vertical velocity is 3.76 meters per second. And I know gravity is going to slow down my jumper as she tries to get to the top of her arc. We're just going to use this much of the path. Looking at those variables, I am going to choose the equation vf squared is vo squared plus 2ay, because I'm going up and down. But you can use x. Nobody's really going to care that much. And I'm solving for y. Now, my final velocity at the top is going to be 0. And I want to get this alone. So I'm going to subtract minus vo squared from both sides. So this is going to end up being negative original velocity squared equals 2 times a times y. How do I get y alone? Divide both sides by 2a. And y is going to end up being negative original velocity squared divided by 2a. So negative original velocity, 3.76 meters per second squared. And that negative sign in this case is outside the square. Uh, divided by 2 times gravity slowing, so negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And when I do the math on that, let's see what I get. 3.76 squared divided by 2 divided by 9.8. I ended up with a vertical displacement of a positive, the two negatives canceled, 0 0.721 meters, or about 72, whoops, about 72 centimeters. All right, there we go, and I'll see you next time. Bye.